Hello everyone, long time no see. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a post where I made this AR drawable t-shirt where users can draw their design onto this layout and it is projected on your 3D t-shirt. Similar ideas have been implemented several times by many top creators and I am going to teach you the core technique which makes these ideas possible. I tried to figure out this idea on my own for a very long time but I couldn't do it right. I reached out in the community to someone who had solved this problem long back in 2020, the genius Pavlo Kachenko, who even hinted a solution on his post in Metaspark community, but I was just unable to figure it out. Meanwhile, I also reached out to Mark Wakefield, who also solved this problem initially with some help from Pavlo. And one sweet morning, I received a base file from Mark to study the technique. I was pretty amazed by the logic but to be honest, it passed over my head a bit. I asked Pavlo if he could explain me a few patches and he gave me the most optimized version which I'll be teaching you in this tutorial. Now it's time to step into Metaspark Studio to do some AR magic. I'm using version 171 as it's more stable among the latest versions. Opening a blank project, let us see how a texture projection actually looks like. For this, let's just quickly add a plane tracker and select an interactive preview for our simulator. Now we need to add a 3D object that can be tracked on this plane surface. And for the purpose of this tutorial, you can import any FBX from your favorite 3D software as long as it is UV unwrapped. Skip to the next section if you know what UV unwrapping is. Those who don't know what UV unwrapping is, it's basically laying out your 3D mesh onto a 2D paper so that you can color it and stick it on your 3D mesh. The colored image wraps itself back to make up your 3D mesh. The horizontal direction along X axis here is called the U axis and the vertical direction along Y axis is called V axis. Feel free to comment down for me to share my favorite UV unwrapping tutorials for beginners but for now you don't need to learn it completely. Just go in Blender and you can simply use the auto unwrap feature for your 3D mesh and it should work fine. For the sake of this tutorial, I will use the AR library to import a simple 3D shape that's UV unwrap. Here I import a high res sphere primitive in my project. I'll just drag and drop it into the plane tracker. As you can see, it's spawned and anchored to a plane in my scene. Quickly scaling it to an easily visible shape. Time to add the texture projection patch to test this out. Going back to AR library and searching for texture projection patch asset. Opening the patch editor and drag and drop the patch asset inside. The input of this texture projection asset would be your camera feed or a scene as a background and the output will be modified according to the mesh that has this texture as its material. And that's how the texture projection patch asset works. Here, I'm using the material that came with the object and plugging it into the base color texture. And for the input, I use the camera texture extracted from the camera just like this. Drag and drop and just plug it in. Uh, here it looks like a white bubble with physically based material. So let's just change the shader type to standard. Reconnect the diffuse texture and here is how the texture projection looks like. If I move the object within my camera, the texture on it is always being projected in the real time. So it does not just capture one part of the texture and gives it to the object. It just keeps doing it continuously. But we want to freeze this projection and capture the frozen part, right? So ideally, we freeze textures by using delay frames, but that wouldn't work in this case if you were to try it traditionally. So we will have to make use of a new technique. The technique is to have a baker object and a bakey object. One that is not going to be visible but actually receiving the projection and other that is visible and is using that baked projection. Let's make some null objects to sync the baker and the bakey and name it sinker. I don't know. 
dragging our sphere inside sinker and renaming it to baker parent and the child named as baker duplicating the same and renaming them as bakey counterparts a baker is the one actually receiving the texture projection and we will render the baker object and freeze it so that this baker object is used to display the frozen texture such that it can be wrapped easily around the bakey object like any other texture let's put this in action start by adding a default render pass pipeline and immediately you notice that the sphere we made is now no more visible in the preview even though it's in the front of camera that's because scene render pass is rendering only the device scene object and if you check by collapsing the objects you see that plane tracker is not a child of the device hence it is not being rendered what i prefer is using render tags so i just disconnect the scene object and in my plane tracker i add a render tag now when i type render in the scene render pass tags mm, nothing happens well that's because the plane tracker itself is not a visible object its children are but they don't have a render tag of their own so we need to add render dot subtree to render all of the children objects that has the render tag you can name this tag as anything you want but i like to use r e n d e r render and now finally it shows up as we left it off now let's get back to the baker and bakey i'm disconnecting the projection and you must notice that the baker and bakey have the same position and rotation and that's what syncing means we can transform the sinker object to move our baker and bakey together notice i've disabled the bakey parent for time being and now we need to add one more thing to continue here it's a simple shader code asset since we don't have a shader patch asset anymore we need to create a bypass shader using a simple lines of code that you can find in my video description double click on the shader code asset to open it in your coding environment or whichever coding editor you use this is the default shader code you get out of the box to use this shader code asset you just need to make a new material and in the shader type you select your shader code asset you'll see that after adding it if i click on the material 0 i see a few parameters like color 1 color 2 and arm count and we need to apply this material on some mesh to see how this actually looks let's put it on the baker for time being and as you see changing the parameters in the materials draws a star shape of different arm counts now let's just delete the default shader code since we don't need it and add a simple set of lines which acts as a bypass shader what this seven lines of code does is pretty self explanatory the add param tag is for your material input parameters like color 1 and will have a default value of vec 0.0.0.0.0 in this case the name of the parameter will be col call next is the type of the parameter which is rgba color and the other parameter has a similar default and the name is pos type is vec4 position next is the main function which does the actual bypassing void main returns nothing just syncs the in parameters with out parameters the first two parameters of the function is col and pos as defined above and the next two parameters are out parameters that represents the output of the shader code all we do is assign the col to the output color and pos to the output position that's it we don't need to code anything anymore save this dot sca file and also save your project if you want to avoid the rework in worst cases you can check the console it mentions that the shader was compiled successfully just go back and forth on your material zero and you'll see your input parameters did you notice the baker object is now no more visible well that's because your shader took all of its vertex positions and collapsed it and hence changing the rgb or a value wouldn't give you anything either <laughs> but don't you worry about anything just keep following as we go let's get the baker position and color in the patch editor 
For color input, we simply put the texture UV projection here, but we can't see anything as the vertices are still collapsed. The idea now is to make the mesh unwrap itself in the screen space. Later we can capture the screen space and use this as the texture. To start with the logic, let's add the vertex attribute patch and select texture coordinates. This attribute holds the UV values of your mesh that is connected at the end. Let's visualize what it looks like. I'll add a plane in the device and as you can see it is not visible in the preview, again because of the render tags, I'll just give it the existing render tag. Adding a new material to debug which reminds us to rename our material so that we can avoid confusion later. Material 0 becomes Baker and Material 1 becomes Debug. Shader type to flat and texture input in patch editor. If I directly connect the vertex attribute to the diffuse texture, it gives me an error because Vector 2 cannot be connected to a Vector 4 input. That means the texture coordinate gives you Vector 2. To solve this, let's add a swizzle patch and swizzle xy01 and see the output. Swizzle basically picks different channels from the input and gives an output recorded. Here we have taken X and Y channel as it is and since the texture coordinate doesn't have a third value, I'm also putting Z as 0 and W or alpha as 1. Now when I play, you see the texture coordinates look like this. Top left pixel is 0, 0, 0, 1, hence black and as you go to the right, X value increases to 1 and hence it goes red. When you go down, Y value increases and goes to 1, hence green. And the bottom right is 1, 1, 0, 1, hence yellow. But we want to do certain math operations to make this UV upright. So let's connect a multiply patch with vector 2 and multiply it with 1, comma, minus 1. Ignore what you see on the plane 0. Let's connect it to the vertex position of our shader. And there, you see a UV map in a corner. That's your sphere unwrapped in screen space. Let us remove our plane zero as we don't need it anymore. And notice scaling your viewport scales your UV map in screen space too. It's always in the bottom right. We want to center this UV map. So let's add a vector four and see what values work. Now, since we want to move towards left, let's try z minus 0.1. And yes, we are moving in the correct direction. So let's just keep on moving and I guess mm, minus 0.5 works. Now we need to move upwards to center it. So let's add Y with 0.5 and it's in the center now. But one little problem is that it's not covering the full screen space. And since my UVs were originally created for full texture and not some center half of it, we want to scale it to full screen space. So let's add to the W value and put minus 0.1. And yes, it's scaling up slowly. So I guess minus 0.5 works here too. This addition is doing nothing but pushing the UV map to cover the center screen completely. Now comes the final stages of rendering this UV separately and using that as a bakey texture. Let's disable the baker parent as I want to see the bakey which has to be visible the whole time. Um, well, if I'm not able to see the baker, how will I render it? The answer is simple, render passes. Just add a scene render pass. The current preview of it is black as there is no scene object being rendered. Drag and drop your baker object in the patches, not the parent, but the child object. And just plug that in the scene object. Now you see the UV mesh in the preview, even though the baker parent is disabled. The baker object can still be rendered using render passes. The parent is hiding the object from our scene but the scene render pass is rendering it as it is. Now we just need to use this texture as our diffuse texture for bakey material. And now you see it's working as expected. And all of this logic was to make the texture projection in the form of UV map. And now whatever you see in this scene render pass can be frozen using delay frame. Moving the position of the baker will break the illusion we worked for. So be careful of what you do with the baker object. And finally, we can implement the freezing logic, however we like. This is a simple setup that I use where I add a mix patch connected to the shader render pass that is connected to the delay frame and also to the diffuse texture. And the delay frame receiver is connected into the mix patch. 
where the alpha is what triggers freeze or unfreeze. You can use screen tap or whatever you want to uh, change this alpha value. And that's all we needed to do. Totally feel free to experiment here and there in this logic and try what works and what breaks to understand it furthermore. And this is how you implement the freezing texture projection technique. And all thanks to Pablo and Mark for helping me to learn this. Please follow these legends and let me know what tutorial should I make next. If you found this tutorial helpful, you can leave a like and a comment. If you further have any questions, feel free to connect and tag me in your creations. And stay tuned for more artistic adventures.